and I'm beyond pleased to uh, be here tonight to celebrate with you graduates. I want to thank an, exception, excuse me, an exceptional group of people who made all of us in the school district proud to be a part of such a superb program, the ADE staff. Thank you for your dedication in, in assisting past, present, and future graduates to reach their goals. To the families and friends of those graduating, congratulations. Your support through this process has made an enormous impact on your graduate. I'm sure you're very proud of them as they close this portion of their lives and prepare for the next steps. And graduates, the biggest congratulations goes to you. Your perseverance is especially noticeable this evening. You did it and you should be very proud of yourselves. I know that all of us here are very proud of you. I'd like to recognize some distinguished guests who are present this evening to join in the celebration of graduation. If you would please stand when I say your name. State Representative Liz Breyer. <laughs> School Board Members Joel Albright.
And then finally, thank you for the ladies effort, doing everything to get this evening, this graduation ceremony together. So now I'm excited to introduce our guest speaker tonight, Lori Elson. So I had the honor of working with Lori for over 15 years in District 196 in our AE program, before she retired last fall. So happy that she was here tonight. So Lori was raised in the Richfield, Bloomington area, where she worked her way through high school and college as a bus girl, a waitress, a machine operator at a plastics factory, plastics factory, admissions clerk at a hospital, an office worker at temp jobs, and as a bus driver. She worked in teaching and administration capacities at a church, school districts, language centers, and universities for 40 years. Prior to working in District 186, she spent 13 years teaching in Asia, including two years in the People's Republic of China and 11 years in Japan. Lori worked 20 years in adult basic education as an English language teacher and as an administrator working with programming for English language classes, GD classes, and high school completion and credit recovery classes. She would like to be able to say that she loved the AB job of AB students the best, but that would be like asking a parent to say, they, to say which child they love best. She loved them all. So please welcome Lori Elson. Thank you, everyone. I am very pleased to be here tonight to celebrate your graduation with you. I'm a little nervous about this graduation speech, and you would think after 40 years of teaching, I would be so nervous. I know I'm nervous because I drove past the exit, and I drove, I drove into the school for eight years at this location. I drove right past the exit and had to turn around. And then I drove right past the school on the way back, so I thought, ooh, my subconscious is telling me I'm a little bit nervous. My youngest sister reminded me that growth happens when you step over the edge of your comfort zone. So although I love being in a classroom, I don't love, I should say, I haven't had a lot of experience teaching, talking to a big group, but I'm ready to grow, so here goes. You are here tonight because at some point you made a decision, you made a decision to earn your high school diploma. Not your parents, not your boyfriends, your girlfriends, not your spouses. You had to make that decision yourself. But for some of you, that goal was set in stone and it never aired. You made it and you're going to do it. But for others of you, the timeline was in sand. You made that decision, but maybe it didn't happen when and how and where you wanted it to. Sometimes life just got in the way. It may have taken you much longer to complete your diploma than you thought or wanted, but that's okay. You're here now, and you deserve a celebration. Earning your high school diploma is a big deal, and you can be proud of your accomplishment, and we are all proud of you. There are three sayings I'd like to share with you tonight that I used with students throughout my career that you might want to recognize and think about. I think it's pertinent to tonight. The first is, this is the longest one. The other two are much shorter. So this is the meat of the speech. You are the captain of your ship. So. You are the captain of your ship. This means you have the choice and responsibility for the decisions you make and whether or not to act on them. You can decide a plan. You can set a course. You can decide where and how you will get there. It's your choice what to think, how to spend your time, and who to be. You are the captain of your ship. If you spent any time at all on Minnesota lakes, you know that being on a boat is not always smooth sailing. You may be the captain of your ship, and you have made a plan, and you have set your course, but things change. You set out when the water is glassy smooth, and 30 minutes later, the wind picks up, and there are white caps on the waves. Obstacles arise, trouble happens, things don't go as planned. 
You find yourself sailing against the winds. It seems nothing is going right. You might go backwards in the wind. You might take on water. You might even capsize. You might have to zigzag your way to where you're going. You might have to pull up to shore and take a break. Hopefully, you have a supportive crew with you. You know how to swim, and you're wearing a life jacket. Being a captain isn't always easy. Life is like that. We chart a course forward, but it seldom goes as planned. When you came to an alternative learning school like ABE, it was because you needed something different. You needed to zigzag. Maybe the usual school or life sequence didn't fit your situation. You might have needed night classes or to take only one or two classes at a time. You might have needed a smaller class size or a smaller building to navigate. You might have been working full time to support your family or raising children. Or you might have been working full time and raising children and going to school. You might have needed a flexible schedule or an online opportunity. You might have needed to show competency for your diploma by taking a test rather than earning credits. You might have had a brief time at ABE, or you might have been working with our staff for years. Your education might have been interrupted by civil war, a death in the family, an illness, a broken car. You might have been working on your English at the same time as you were working on your diploma classes. You worked your way through the storms life sent your way. You zigged, you zagged, and then you did it again and again until you got back on course. Luckily, you didn't abandon ship and you got to go. So kudos for a job well done. I'm very proud of each of you. Have confidence that you will achieve continued success in your future goals. So there's a question that gets asked around this time to graduates all over. And some graduates have grown to dislike the question. You might have been getting it. So what are you going to do next? What's your plans? What's your next goal? Some of you might have a clear plan, and some of you may have no idea at all. And that's okay. Wherever you're at on your trip, it's okay. Just remember that there are different ways to learn, different ways to achieve. Learning is a lifelong venture. Mark Twain said, I never let my schooling get in the way of my education. I'm just going to tell you right now, so some of you have heard Eric talk about my teaching overseas. One thing I learned from teaching overseas is more about the American education system and the idea of lifelong learning. We have so many programs and opportunities for people to continue learning, training, getting job skills. And I'm really happy with the district and our state for being the leader that we are in lifelong education. So take advantage of that opportunity. Gaining new skills, learning different ideas, building deep relationships, developing positive habits, discovering different perspectives. These can happen in the workplace, at the gym, out in the community, through additional education, and yes, through the internet. Among the practical things that YouTube has taught me since I retired in September is how to unclog my sink and change a flat tire. Neither of which I hope to do anytime again in the future. If you're at a loss for what to do next, use your network of family, friends, and teachers, anyone you meet on the street for ideas and suggestions. Ask a question. What do you think I should look for in a job? What do you think might be a suitable career for me? What did you like about your job? What do you think about my continuing schooling? Ask for ideas from people who know you and be open to trying new things and then do some research on that. 
In my life, I benefited a lot from the help of others. Their advice set me on paths I would never have imagined for myself. When I was a senior in high school, um, I loved my parents dearly. They got married when they were 18 and 19. They had eight children in 12 years. They were busy paddling, just working and taking care of kids and helping us have the best childhood we could. But as a senior in school, they had no advice for me in college. They had no framework. I was lucky that my friend's mom asked me, what's your plans, what's your interests? I told her I was interested in living in a dormitory away from home. <laughs> Pretty much it. There were seven girls and one boy in my family. Five, five girls were teenagers at the same time, right? I was interested in living in a dorm in a small college outside of the metro area. She loaded me up in her car, she drove me to her alma mater, and she helped me get enrolled. And so did my high school counselor. And it helped that I was a first generation student. My parents got financial aid. I should say I got financial aid because of that, which is, um, was extremely helpful in my being able to go to college. Later, when I was 24, my friend told me about a teaching job she heard about in Japan. She said, let's go. I said, yes, let's go. So we planned that together. Then she went to a party, and she met the love of her life. And she said, ah, zigzag. I'm going to Texas with this guy I just met. And I said, OK, I'm going to Japan. And off I went, and off she went. I, taught, I had a great time for that year, and she's still married 40 years later, very happily. We don't know where things are going to zig and zag. When I came back from Japan, I wasn't sure what I should do. I was up at the cabin with a friend's dad and his family, and he had been the main air traffic controller at the Chicago airport and said, have you ever thought about being an air traffic controller? And I had to say, I have a degree in theology. No, I never thought, I, what does an air traffic controller do? He said, I think you might have the right temperament. And I said, okay, I can study for that. He said, no, you don't have to study. Just go take the test, right? Guess how I did on that test? <laughs> Not so good. So that, that little plan didn't work. Test didn't work out. That wasn't my career. I ended up going to graduate school to study teaching ESL. And my second year there, a classmate of mine was a visiting scholar from China. And she said, why don't you come and teach at my university in China? And I said, OK, why not? I knew nothing about the People's Republic of China. I mean, nothing. They didn't cover that. I don't know. I, I, wasn't, I didn't cover that in my high school classes or college. I just figured I would learn as I go. So show up in China, not knowing the language, not knowing the government, not knowing anything, but someone was going to meet me at the airport. And I said, good enough until about a week before I had to go. I had such a panic attack. And my mother has always been, go, go for the adventure, get out of here. <laughs> go do everything she didn't get to do. And she said, you don't have to go. Just call them, just tell them you're not coming. You can cancel this, you don't have to go. And I said, I don't even have a phone number. I don't have an address. All I know is I'm supposed to meet Pani at this time at the Beijing airport. I'd better go. So I went, and I spent two life-changing years in China, and I'm so glad that I got out of my comfort zone and went there. Now, none of you is gonna remember this, but maybe somebody up here might, and some people back there. In 1989, the Tiananmen incident happened in Beijing. And it was, um, my sister and I were both teaching there at the Police Officers Academy. And we got called back to Minnesota by my parents. They said, get on the plane and come home. So we did that. I was not planning to, I was planning to stay in China longer, but things took a zigzag. A couple months, I don't think I was even unpacked, and my brother 
called me up and said, I have something to show you. And it was an ad for a position in teaching at a Minnesota State College that was just opening up in the north of Japan. So this is an opportunity to be a founding faculty member, to go start something new, to build every policy, curriculum, everything from the ground up and to be part of that. And um, it was the best interview I ever had because I was already happily teaching at Minneapolis Roosevelt High School. I didn't care if I got that job or not because I was happy where I was. But when I got the offer, I thought, I can't, I can't turn this down. And I spent 10 wonderful years in Japan. And students, the Japanese students that we taught there, studied in English to improve their English. And then they had two years of community colleges in Japan. And then they transferred here to St. Cloud State, but they just stayed in one state, the different state colleges. So it was a wonderful experience. Another failure for me came in the 1990s when my coworkers pointed me towards the Foreign Service. And while I was in Japan, I went twice to take that test. And they didn't want me either, so, okay, they don't want me, that's fine. I'll find something else to do, so. After 10 years in Japan that time, I came back to Minnesota, um, and I was very lucky in the year 2000 when my sister told me about an opening at the ADE program in Rosemont to Apple Valley, Eden. Uh, when I left for Asia, I can't say there was a lot of diversity around Minnesota that I saw. When I came back in 1999 and I went to Walmart, I was like, whoa, look at all these wonderful people that are at the Walmart. They must want to come to some English classes, and I'm an English teacher. So I was very happy to be able to come back to Minnesota and see that the world had come to Minnesota, or at least this corner of Minnesota. So I worked um, with wonderful students and staff in this program for 16 years, and I learned a lot from them. Last fall, when I told one of the adult diploma learners that I was retiring, he said, oh, don't think of it as retiring. Think of it as repurposing your time. And that's a thought that has stayed with me. Many things people have said to me and taught me has stayed. And that's what I, everybody says now. When you're, what are you doing when you're retired? I'm repurposing my time. I was just telling Superintendent Kruger, Kruger I still take classes. I love school, I love classes. But now my classes are at the YMCA, and they're called Silver Sneakers and Water Aerobics. <laughs> and then I'm taking a Spanish class, finally. So I appreciated all the help people gave me as I was figuring out my journey. I've tried to make similar connections for others, and I strongly advise you to both Give and receive help when you can. Ask for help when you can. You are not alone. Use your network of people to help you stay afloat. You are the captain of your ship. It's your choice what to think, how to spend your time, and who to be. Now, I'm going on to my second and third thoughts, which are much shorter, so hang in there. My second thought comes from a sign that counselor from Rosemont High School gave me a few years back at graduation. And it's still hanging in the office, I think, that Chris took over. It says, life gets better. Life gets better. To me, this means that we have to hang in there during the day, dark days and times of our lives. Nobody gets all the good cards in the deck. There are broken relationships, cancer, cancer twice illnesses, money, food, housing insecurities, depression, social anxiety, being bullied, loneliness, jobs like overwork, pandemics, school, school shootings, injustice. All of these weigh our spirits down and some days just make it hard to get out of bed. But we have to have hope, we need to persist, and we need to hang on. One thing I can say from 60, almost 65 years old, that I've experienced over the days is better days will come. Don't give up, life gets better.
when do dark days come, and they will, I think a lot of you have been through them already too, up and down zigzag. It helps to speak to someone, to reach out to others, to let someone know how you're feeling. Disconnect from all the noise. Get out into nature. Try to do something new or different. Move your body. Change your routine. Don't be afraid to get professional help. You are not alone and people care. That gets me to the last piece of advice I'll share which comes from a little magnet that I think is still hanging on the filing cabinet in my old office. Go forth. Act decent. Call your mom from time to time. Always remember your parents love you more than you will ever know. So finally, I congratulate you again, and I wish you all the best in life. Remember, you are the captain of your ship. Life gets better. Go forth, act decent, and call your mom from time to time. Thank you all for listening. special student speakers who are going to come up here and share their story. And you know, I was just kind of looking at what Lori was saying about zigging and zagging, and it's funny because these two student speakers, pretty much when I started here at ABE a long time ago, they were with me in the beginning, and they zigged and zagged, and now they're here ready to share their story and share this graduation moment with you guys. So, our first speaker to start, Candice Craig. Come on up, Candice.
that are done, how, um, you know, all the support from the staff, honestly, all the patients they've given me. And I mean, my parents are really better than that, so. Um, like I said, I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible, so I'm just going to jump right into it. I actually used to love school. I was lucky. I was thrilled to be there, thrilled to be with my friends, hanging out, everything. I'm talking about this was in preschool, the preschool you never had. And then, I mean, my own mother will attest that I used to get so upset when I'd see my older brother. He would have. Uh, get on the yellow, the big yellow school bus before me at school, or in the morning before the school, and then I had to take this, you know, the short purple bus that was preschool. And then finally the big day came, and I got to get on the big yellow bus at my older brother. And I, I don't know how long I had been into it, but one day after school, we were on, the, on, the, on our way home on the bus, there was a kid sitting in front of me. And this kid, he, he lay out a big side. He was like, ah, fine. So I, so I asked him, what do you mean? Like, you don't like school? Or, and he was like, heck no. I was like, you do? And that's, that's, it was like 10 seconds I had to decide. And, and I did not. That's when, you know, heck no, of course not. But that actually changed my perspective on things. I, I went from loving school and, you know, thinking like, this is these needs to, I can't wait to get home and play video games or go hang out with my friends or I don't want people to think I'm smart, you know, things like that. So the one thing I like, I do want to leave you guys here with is honestly, and, and this is for, I mean, for everything, not just for school, but you have to, it sounds funny to me, we we're told time after time. But honestly, it's, trust me, trust me. But you have to follow your heart. So, no matter whether it's, I don't know, buying a new car, or moving states, or, you know, should I wear this today, should I wear that today? It doesn't matter. You have to follow your heart. Yeah, take in as much as you can from, you know, everybody else. Say, for example, if you're buying a new car, and you ask the car salesman, hey man, if this were between this or this, which one would you pick? And then he tells you. But you have to take everything in. You might even have to do a little bit of research afterwards. You have to take everything in and then decide for yourself. Because only you know what's best for you. You know what I mean? And <clears throat> because I thought the cool thing to do back then was to not go to school. And then here, here comes high school. And it's, I find out that the cool thing is to, you know, get good grades, excel, on to college, etc. But honestly, just remember that. Just follow your heart. Do what you think is best. And that's all. I just wanted to thank everyone here, all the staff. I came here when I was 19. It wasn't even in this building. It was in a, behind the lobby. It was on a cliff road. And um, I went to summer school for that. But, um, the first time I came here, and I think I needed like 17 credits or something like that. It was insane. It was, you know, 17 credits to, to get there. And I think like the max that I was to do was like seven for that summer school class. And for some reason, like I said, it's a great stat. They let me do nine. So I knocked out nine credits just right off the bat um, right there in summer school. And I came back for a semester after that. So I think it was my own semesters. And I completed it for one. It was, you know, no biggie. And then I stopped coming. And then I turned to like 20, 21. Kept coming back, even come back for like a month. They gave me like a 0.25 credit here and there. But for some reason, this like past year, I don't know, it's like I kind of just like hit it in here. And, I, and coming back, I, was, I thought the same thing I always thought when I came out. Oh my gosh, I walked through this hallway. And, Everyone's gonna look at me and be like, who is my session? This is a grown man, you know? And I was just, I, don't know, I was just really anxious all the time that it was the complete opposite. I came in expecting, you know, Chris to be like, oh, like you changed the new leaf again? All right, cool. But no, I came back and Chris was happier to see me than I was to be there, honestly. 
And then he told me that, oh, you just called and asked about me, and Diane just called and asked about me, and we're talking about you, I just had to pull over here, and honestly, I just, I can't thank him enough. And gave him the back there for doing what he does, and he's so patient, and, you know, just related, reassuring me that I'm, I'm right on time. And that's another thing I want to let everyone know. You know, everyone learns different, influences different, I mean, Everyone's time is different, so just know that you're all on time too. Thank you. Thank you so much to both of our student speakers. It takes a lot of courage to come up here and talk and you know tell your story. So we really appreciate you sharing it with us. It's probably for me one of the highlights of the whole night, so I appreciate you both. Thank you very much. So, now what we're going to do is we are going to call up our graduates, introduce them, and just kind of get the party started. Before that, I just want to say a quick few things. Is that uh, reflecting on the year, and I just kind of was thinking like, this year we had a lot of ups and downs, twists and turns, there's a lot of things going on with a lot of different people and a lot of thing, things going on in the outside world. And uh, I'm just really proud of all you guys that made it happen and stayed the course. You know, it wasn't easy. It really wasn't. And I just am really proud to be a part of that. And I know our staff is too. And speaking of that, I just want to give a big, uh, big thanks and shout out to our staff because they provided a stable, safe, and welcoming environment for all of our learners to find success and uh, we couldn't do it without them. So that's just something I want to recognize as well. So uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna announce the graduates of 2022. Uh, as we announce your names, family members, feel free to cheer, clap, holler. That's what it's all about. Um, that's great. If you have a person who's a designated photographer, they can feel free to come up closer to the stage and take a picture, just one person, please. And uh, just a reminder, I'll say it at the end, don't forget, we have uh, refreshments and cookies in the back once the ceremony is over. All right, let's get started. Dignitaries, are you ready? Let's start. Our first graduate today, her name is GED, is Dismas Ugatu Agar. Come on up. Close to your heart, passing point. Dismas would like to thank Miss Darcy for being patient with him and all the material she gave him that contributed to his success. He wanted to also thank all his classmates for their cooperation. His favorite motto is everyone is capable, capable of doing anything under the sun, and his future plans are to go to college. Julian L. Black. <laughs> Julian would like to thank Joe L. Black and his grandparents. His favorite motto is to stay lifted. His future plans are to go to college and succeed. Let's give him a round of applause. Our next graduate, earning her GED, is Rosa. Maria Bracamontes. Rosa started in the early ESL classes here at ABE and worked her way all the way through the GED program. She has also earned her citizenship this year after taking a citizenship class with Mary. She would like to thank God, friends, and the love of her life. Her, her favorite words to live by is anything is possible. Her future plans are to go to cos or get her cosmetology license. <laughs> Next, turning the GED is Genevieve Brake. <laughs> Genevieve struggled in high school. Oh. Genevieve struggled in high school. 
uh, and struggled a lot with homework and grades. When she turned 18, she dropped out because school was hard and she didn't like it. She was successful in reaching her goal because she pushed herself to get her GED and start moving forward in life. My advice to others is to just do it. It is much easier than you think, and getting it done is worth it. She would like to thank her mom, dad, grandma for always pushing me to be the best I can be. Her future plans are, now that she has her GED, I'm also planning to go to cosmetology school. Candice, Craigie. Candice became pregnant in high school and was forced to seek alternative education options. She was tired of her father bragging about her oldest brother getting his GED, and she wanted to get her high school diploma. She had to set an example for her kids, and she says, never give up no matter how long it takes. You'll get there sooner than you believe. She would like to thank her mother, Dawn Craigie, and my family and friends. Not only did they give me the support on my journey, but they pushed me as well. This caused me not to give up when things got hard. Her future plans, her future plans are to continue her education and raise her kids. Next up, earning his GED, is Elias, the backer. Yeah. Yeah. Elias struggled in school, but he is glad that he never gave up. And if you notice yourself procrastinating, make an effort to show up. He would like to thank his family, teachers, and classmates that helped motivate him through the process. His favorite motto is, with hardship comes ease. His future plans are to get into the tech industry. <laughs> Next up, earning his high school diploma, is Juan Diaz. Juan wants to move forward as an entrepreneur. Real estate investing and the financial literacy are very important to him, so he decided to finish his high school career so he could move forward being a real estate agent brokerage or one day possibly attending college and getting a business degree. He would like to thank Alicia Hanks for always pushing me to reach my goals. <laughs> Next up, earning his high school diploma is Carlos and Francisco Akiwa. <laughs> Carlos started AP at age 19 and was on and off with the program for eight years. Feeling welcome is the main reason why I was able to finish AP. I would tell others it is the easiest thing ever. It's just a matter of doing it. He would like to thank Chris and Lori, who have been there since the beginning, Diane for having me in her English class, Gabe for reassuring me and putting my mind at ease, and Leslie for getting me involved and making me feel welcome. His favorite motto is, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. A lot of times we rush to do things and end up making mistakes that cost us time. His future plans are to open a Big Brother, Big Sister program for mentally challenged youth where they can meet new friends, and also provide aid for those who cannot receive help from the government due to not having a social security number. Next up, earning his GED, is Nahom Gamfa Kabede. <laughs> Nahom has some advice, and he was just wanted to say he was very committed to earning his diploma and worked hard to achieve it. He would like to thank his parents, they were his biggest support system. They encouraged me to keep pushing my boundaries and reminded me every day that I am capable. My future plans, I would like to further my education by attending community college. <laughs> Earning his high school diploma, Bryce Laporte. <laughs> Bryce 
quite consistent, normal kid going about life, then some unexpected things happened. I had to switch schools. My brother had gone to ABE. I was successful here because I had help along the way. My advice would be to focus. He would like to thank his parents, friends, and families who helped guide me to who I am today. My favorite motto is do or do not. There is no try from Yoda. This motto has been a guide through my life and has helped me with tough decisions. My future plans are I can't plan on saving money so eventually I can move in with other people. Next up, earning his GED, Kareem Hassan Mahadi. No! Kareem's advice would be to stay focused and eliminate everything that felt like a distraction. My advice is the harder you work in the short term, you can change your life in the long term. We would like to thank his mom, Sarah, and father, Hassan. They have shaped me to the man that I am today. To Kenyatta, my best friend, for constantly motivating me and supplying me useful resources to be able to complete my GED. My favorite motto, as my mom tells me, cut off fake friends. They'll distract you from accomplishing your goals in life. And as my pop says, the goal is to become a boss in life. And this diploma puts me closer to becoming a boss. Amen. Amen. Jacqueline Martinez. <laughs> Jacqueline is earning her high school diploma. Her advice is she wanted to earn her diploma and she wanted to be an example for her kids. She would like to thank Barb and her teachers for helping her through this journey. Her favorite words are to never give up and chase your dreams. And her future plans are to just keep working and raising kids. Earning his high school diploma, Chunny Yang. <laughs> Chunny has a story. My story started with COVID, the downfall of my grades and catching up on assignments and balancing my life, my work life, were starting to take a toll on my mental state. The reason I was successful reaching my goal was the ADE environment. I felt like I was actually getting the help I needed from the staff and teachers, which I am very thankful for. My advice for anyone who is still on their journey graduating is, you got this. Where I used to get through this, what, when I used to get through this journey is to stay motivated and consistent, and eventually you'll be heading towards the goal you want. Johnny would like to thank his family for staying patient while he got through this journey. He'd like to thank everybody who helped him with his education, such as his teachers from pre-K all the way through 12th grade and the teachers at ADE. His future plans are to go to college and get degrees in business and photography. And finally, earning his GE, Julio Zamora. Julio is receiving his GED, and his advice would be just to keep moving forward. He would like to thank his mother and siblings. His favorite motto is, for every dark night, there is a brighter day. His future plans are to continue to work and figure out the next step. All graduates, would you please stand up? I present to you the class of 2022. Can we please give them one more round of applause?